I'd like to talk to you today about um, your journey and how you got involved initially with alternative healing. And uh, I know you have a whole bag of tricks, a lot of <laughs> modalities, let us say, of alternatives. And uh, I know one of them is hypnosis, laughter therapy, uh, name a few more. I know you've got a whole bunch. What else do you do? Oh. Boy, well, let, let's say that I started my journey actually in in um, in the esoteric, in the spirituality, and actually the ascension process. That's what I call it, the journey of the ascension uh, process. And you know, when I was a little girl, my uh, my mother, my grandmother. See, I believe that our sole purpose comes also from the lineage of the ancestral um, energy and memory and our soul purpose, which is all entwined together. So I believe I come through a lineage of a lot of shamans, um, a lot of healers, um, even, you know, comparing with my life of today, uh, we have a lot of doctors and uh, musicians and artists and poets and you know, so whatever arts you're in, we we have it in our DNA. Sure. So, and I also believe in, you know, when we look at it through the esoteric um, windows, we do what is aligned in our soul purpose, as some people can call it their calling, very simply put. Mm -hmm. So as I was a little girl, I had a lot of visions and um, I had a lot of dreams. And then, see, what's happening is as you are ascending, as you are going through your soul journey, whatever you need to learn and experience, you go into it because you chose it already. And then um, I started communicating with the spirit world. Um, then my parents, my mother, she's uh, very interested in the mediumship. So I used to come from school. And there was a group of people in the middle of the living room, you know, <laughs> calling spirits. And we had chairs all up in the air moving around. Really? So that was my daily life. <laughs> you had levitation? <laughs> Levitations. And, you know, uh, parapsychology was very big in, the, in those times. And my mother, especially, and my grandmother, especially my grandmother losing a... Um, a 17 year old beautiful daughter brought her into more into parapsychology sure so uh then you know i don't think we learn i think we experience i don't like the word lessons learning i i really call them experiences of what we choose again mm -hmm. so then as i you know moved forward um as a teenager um i started just reading just reading and reading and experiencing through dreams, having lucid dreams. Then came the time, um, college, where I started to recognize the healer in me. But it was really simple and funny because I just got interested in massage. I learned shiatsu. And so you, you see, each phase brings you to something, you know, the, the spirit, the body and whatever. Right. So. Then I was going to become a physical therapist, actually. I went to school, but I was very disappointed with the, uh, with the medical system. And I knew... <laughs> no surprise there, Ooh -hoo. if you're at all aware. And, <laughs> and I knew deep inside, um, it was just a knowing, not a proof in a way, that my sole purpose would be uh doing the healing in the spirit body and mind not only trying to fix the body and uh, not only being manipulated uh by certain let's say whoever has their hands over the medical uh world and healthcare world we, i don't need to put names here so then i came back and i went into tourism experience again whole different things where i met people from all over the world so there's interaction with 
all kinds uh, about relationships. And each experience brought me closer and I met very, very interesting people, um, which continued to guide me towards. Then suddenly I found myself all over the place doing, just going to little workshops and this and that. Um, then my really serious journey with really heavy studying and practice came when I moved back to the United States, which I have a very international background, as you know, Steve. Yes. Uh, being uh, in the also geographically, you get a lot of experiences. You know, I lived in the Middle East, I lived in Europe, and I lived in the United States. So each land also has something to offer to you. Mm -hmm. um, then I began. Uh, seriously going into uh, more learning but started to do it in in public a little bit which I started doing tarot readings at a store I didn't know that yeah because I used to read you know my Turkish background as you know I'm half Turkish half American and using my sixth sense and improving with my friends we used to joke and I used to read coffee cups Turkish coffee cups <laughs> So, the little grounds yeah. in the bottom, you mean? Yeah, the shapes, you yeah, know, the symbols and uh, the shapes. And I was also reading crystals and the stones, you know, whatever I see. Um, so what happened is uh, I went to this bookstore, which is in Belmont, very close to us. But unfortunately, it closed. It was called Full Circle Books. Yeah, that's like and, uh, a mile from here where I live. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I walked in for a reading. And at that time, funny enough, I was working in food retail. Again, another experience. But um, so I went and there was this, and this is interesting. There was this lady, her name was Lynn, God bless her. She was reading the, the lines on your, your thumb and your fingers later on, first with the thumb. And as she started talking, I went. Kind of like a palm reader. But well, um. no finger, no f your fingerprints. I've never heard of that. <laughs> yeah, very interesting, and it was only you know your fingerprints, not the palm, and um, so as she was talking, I ended up channeling her mother, and um, wow, you so gave her I, some feedback. <laughs> it, yeah, sort of, <laughs> and <laughs> well, anyway, to the. To, <laughs> she was like, oh, wow, and then went to the store, and she says, you know, you're not happy doing the worldly work. You need to do spiritual work and, you know, be of service. That's your life purpose. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm married. I've got a child. And, you know, you go into this stuff. Mm -hmm. And she turned around and told the owner, Sandra, she says, I vouch for this woman if she's going to work here, if do anything. And she got me started being more out there, and I started reading tarot at the store. Nice. So what I'm saying is in our lives one step brings us to another step mm -hmm. for our growth. We call and as it we're doing it unfoldment, right? Unfoldment, exactly. Yeah. And and as you're doing for yourself um personally, you know, um you're also doing it for the collective. Yeah. It's automatic. Sure. You know. And we we don't um so you know, I, I got the the story a little long, but I think it's very important and will be helpful for the listeners that you have to recognize the signs you've had from childhood. And usually when I'm doing an interview and when I'm talking, and if I kind of look like I'm going off subject, I'm really bringing a subject where it's going to help individuals. So I apologize for jumping uh, occasionally. Well, wait, didn't uh, Rumi tell a lot of stories, too? It, it, well, yeah, actually, we're storytellers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, and it's that the is best. healing, you know, telling stories. Yeah. yeah. John, um, John Gray tells stories. Uh, well, there are a lot of yeah. great storytellers. That are, Native American. What about children's stories, you know, those fables? It's, exactly. It's It all teaches us the wisdom. So... Um, I think uh, the note that I want to put in here is a lot of individuals, a lot of beautiful souls, they are open as they are little children. But what happens is when they show their true selves, 
<laughs> yeah, and they demonstrate <laughs> and they say, they speak openly. Mm -hmm. What happens is people around them go into fear. And they get hammered. <laughs> and judgment, exactly, and they get hammered. And what happens is, as they're so beautifully open, and if they were guided, then they can, you know, start their journey just a little bit earlier. But um, never look at one thing from one window. Maybe that's what they needed to experience and go. However, I, I believe in, in uh, soul expression and helpful guidance. So I even have a client like this that I'm working on um, these days. She had great visions and her insight was wonderful, but got shut down by the parents thinking people will say she's crazy. In you see, and a lot, this is yeah, everywhere, really. I mean, I've heard this in Europe, in the Middle East, you know, a lot of suppression of the, the soul to be in, in um, free expression for many reasons. Do you think that's a fault of, uh, an effect of religion worldwide? Um, not, well, I always say the gray has many shades. There's never one purpose. Um, I believe there is, um, I know it goes into conspiracy or however people want to put it. I'm a no form person. I look into everything, but I believe there is a dominance of some groups that don't want people to think for themselves to excel because it's about greed and control and power. Mm -hmm. um, I also believe we have patterns um, that have been embedded in our DNA coming all the way from our ancestors, which blocks us to open up, even though we have, let's say, an inner knowing, but we don't know really why and how what's happening in our lives sometimes. Those inner sabotages. Mm -hmm. um, now I can hit into the past life very quickly. The inner sabotages and the inner patterns that are blocking us. And here is where the past life regression can really help. And, and I always is, say... We should say this is one of my uh, major interests for the last two mm -hmm. years. I've mm -hmm. read a stack of books, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I mm -hmm. can't tell you how many, dozens on past life regression. And that's really mm -hmm. the one of the reasons I wanted to talk to you today because I know mm -hmm. you, you were able to do that. So uh, go ahead. So, past life regressions is one way, and I want to give you some good stories about that from uh, my uh, subjects that I've worked with, but I also want to remind everyone that there is never one way. We are all different individuals, we have different vibrations, we have different frequencies, we have different thought patterns, and we have a different path. So, my motto is, whatever works whatever works. That's why we have the variation of all these modalities available on earth. Mm -hmm. So how I got into the past lives was I was doing shamanic work. I was learning about shamanism, which brought in my ancestral work. And um, after shamanism, I went into Reiki. And right after Reiki, that's where I was introduced in past lives, where I was handed a book by my shaman teacher, and which was uh, my wonderful teacher, Marilyn Gordon, and she's in Oakland. Um, my, yeah, she's, she's uh, turned my life around. And um, so I read her book, and I said, wow, this is very interesting. So what happens is whatever you're drawn to is basically a little signal stimulating, saying, look over here, there is something that you need to look into. So I called her um, and I started going to her class. That was it, that's how I started. Now, here comes the interesting story of how my life started transforming with hypnotherapy, past life regressions, is I started with this lifetime and then went into the back life. I was traveling to uh, Oakland for my first day of the first class. Well, I'm not a very good driver and I get lost. That's another past life thing I had was <laughs> because when uh, I was 40 years old in one of my lifetimes, I had died in an airplane crash. 
and I never reached my destination. So I always have this fear, I'm never going to be able to find my destination, and I panic. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's improved, uh, but I'm still working on it. So anyway, I get my directions, and I have my Reiki master teacher with me, which was lovely. You know, life never ends. She was 70 years old, still going to improve herself. So my co-pilot is legally blind. Great. <laughs> and, yeah, Just what you like, want. <laughs> <laughs> She's a darling. And I'm going, and my sister gave me directions, and I said, you know, because she knows I get lost. So here we are going. And she's like, you know, you're going to pass a bridge. After you pass a bridge, you know, you're going to go this direction. Here's this, that. You call me if you're stuck. So I'm going, I passed one bridge. And I'm like, I'm supposed to be there in the most 35, 40 minutes, you know. And I passed another bridge. And I'm getting, this is like, and then I passed the third bridge. <laughs> That's what they call a bridge too far. <laughs> <laughs> exactly and i'm almost in sacramento you know oh my god <laughs> so i said man this is too long it's an hour and and i'm going amy you know i think we're lost well she goes you know bless her heart she can't say you know i saw the sign she says well i feel the sign was saying this and we were going to this I feel. That's <laughs> but good. she's That's got good. You know, she's got such a good sense of humor, you know. And I'm like, well, what? I'm glad you're feeling it. But I said, you know, it's an hour. And I stopped the car. Good man. And I called my sister in panic. I, she goes, calm down, take a deep breath. And she says, look around you. Where are you? And this is now very interesting. This is also a technique we use in hypnosis when the soul starts traveling so she can, uh, a person can... Um, feel, understand, mm -hmm. be in the presence of where they are. So <laughs> she goes, look around, where are you? And I said, well, there's um, overpass and there's a sign that says, and I'm like, there's a little hill on the side and there's a building. And I said, it says Fairfield. <laughs> and she goes, tell me, tell me, what, you, what did you see? What did you see? I said, it says Travis Air Force Base. And I started crying. <laughs> 40 years after, because I never lived in California before I lived abroad, you know, this that was my second year that I came back to living in California, I stopped exactly where I was born. No. Facing the hospital. Oh, my God. <laughs> facing the hospital I was born, I stopped right in front of it. That's too weird. It was weird. And this is my, I, I haven't even, this is starting and I haven't even gone to my hypnotherapy class yet. <laughs> You're obviously an advanced student. Yes. <laughs> so I go over the past, you know, just like this, I find the class and I'm like, oh, interesting. So I walk in. <laughs> now here starts my journey. We're 12 people in class and each week, um, our, our teacher, Marilyn, takes one subject, one of us, and does a hypnosis session. So everyone can get the feel of it, and we can study. So, And usually half day, we worked on each other, and then we did the uh, academic part of it. Guess who ended up being the first person? You. <laughs> Me, of course, since I already began the journey. And... Um, I went in, the healing was not, my first experience was not about the past life. My first experience was about a childhood trauma um, that I had that was totally uh, sabotaging and blocking me in this lifetime. And this, I realized, um, had a big block with me uh, in having relationships. And I wanted to be, uh, and that's why I've always been with the weight. I didn't want people to notice me. I wanted to be in the background, but with being such a loud mouth, that was a little difficult, but <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it talking, so I did it with my appearance. Mm. I didn't want men to notice me. 
So um, it was a difficult time, but I was not aware of it. So what happens is when we go into hypnosis and the, the type of hypnosis that, you know, I'm more with the Ericksonian method and I believe um, that the soul knows what it needs, I can just guide them to do it safely. And and Eric, guide so, er, Erickson, by the way, is a storyteller. Yes, yes storyteller again. Yeah. So, exactly. I love it. I love the storytelling. That's how the ancestors did it. And um, so I went in there and I healed myself. And I had guidance with Marilyn, but I healed myself. It took almost two hours. In one session? And one session the took session. two hours. Yes, but the thing is, when the mind is calm, when the mind is calm, you're able to access everything. So you mean you're in the theta state? Yes. Basically, yes. low, uh, really low vibrations. Exactly. Low Our cycles, brain vibrations, I mean. right? Mm -hmm. We come in. Just I like to talk in layman's terms, um, because I get bored with too much. Um, how can I say? Too much symbology and too much academic lingo. It takes the uh, the beauty out of the uh, the story. If anybody else wants to look into it, you know, they can look into terminologies. Anyway, so what happens is your brain goes in right before you're sleeping. Mm -hmm. That's the feeling you go into. That's the brain wave. Right before the delta wave, let's say. You go into the theta wave. So... Um, that was my first experience, and it was an amazing breakthrough, and it was very shocking for me, and a good introduction to how powerful um, the soul is, and when it is ready, and it does what it needs to do to heal. So, um, now, were now you, let me tell were you, you. Were you able to visualize, uh, to see... Uh, the lifetime or being in that body as a child when you first did that? How did that look yeah. to you? Good question. A lot of us have a lot of uh, predestined ideas um, and we're very judgmental and we're very, um, we try to be too much in control of it. What's very important is we need to understand some of us are tactile, some of us are visual, some of us hear, some of us feel. So it really doesn't matter. It's however your body and your senses are strong. That's how it works. But here's the good thing. You can start visual, but as you're practicing, you can become audio as well. You can become tactile as well. So nothing is limited. You can see, hear, smell. You can smell flowers, even you know beautiful aromas in your session. So you're you're using you can use all of your senses, and if you have one or two, you can improve on the other. Um, let me tell you how um, our past lives can uh, sabotage us in this lifetime. I have an excellent story, which I was working with a subject. She came to me and said, you know, I have a problem with prosperity. I said, wow, okay. She says, I'm a hard worker, I'm dedicated, I'm disciplined, but I am just not able to put money together. I'm tired of living, you know, always with limited economy. And she says, you know, and I'm doing so much. And she says, I want to know how I can shift this you know what's blocking me what's holding me so okay we go into in hypnosis and boom five minutes and when the soul is ready boy they can jump right into it sometimes you don't even have to do the induction that takes sometimes 10 minutes to bring the person to that uh theta level the brain level and she started her face and everything, it was like she was suffocating. And she started, you know, grasping for air mm -hmm. and just jumping on the couch. And I was going, holy Moses, I've never seen this happen before, you know. But we immediately bring the subject into saying, you know, you're not experiencing the same feelings 
you're only going to watch it as an observer and you're going to tell us what's happening. And here's what happens. A lot of people, they have fear because they're going to lose control. Right. And this is where we come as practitioners, help the person to be in control and do what they can do. We're just simple guides. And so we cal I calmed her down and then I said, tell me about it. Well, she says, um, she lived in the time in Egypt where um, her husband was a very rich noble. And when the nobles, or the rich, when they die, you know, uh, they have a pyramid. And what happens though, everything that belongs to them goes in the tomb with them. With their so when, servants too, right? Exactly. So wife. when the husband, <laughs> wife, when the husband died, um, all the servants go in. She had a cat, you know, and cats were very sacred at those times that they loved. They embalmed the cat and everything. And she said that we had a little food, but we had this little opening. And she said for air, that opening for air. And then she says in time, the air finished and we all suffocated. So nice. look what's happening. Being rich oh. equals into dying. I get it. Money. Well, success means dying, suffocating. Now, would your soul allow that? <laughs> what a block. Well, is it really the soul or is it some, you know, lower aspect that is actually more fearful? You know what I'm saying? In choosing, well, I, you know, I, I know, I believe, and I think you do too, that we choose our lives somewhere in, be, in the in-between lives, we choose our next life with guidance and so forth. So uh, Correct. maybe you could address right. that, that issue or that aspect. Okay, so here's what happens. When we are going to um, come again into life, and which we, I believe we have incarnations in parallel lives also, mm -hmm. that um, the, the memory is embedded in our cells and in our bones and in our bone marrows and in our DNA, in everything. So we are our walking, talking library, our database. So you, you're carry, saying you're bringing the database with you when you exactly. incarnate in every successive lifetime, right? Exactly. Exactly. We have that individually and collectively. We're carrying everything individually and collectively. So what happens is when there is a trauma that is very extreme, we carry the memory and the energy together which Let's is not in, forget. in her case fear a lot of fear around money a lot of fear exactly yeah. about money so it can be anything so what happens is the experience we're having in the now is and which everything is in the now by the way but the experience is triggering the past memory so what it does is when that triggers the old memory that is on the surface that needs to be released, transformed, Healed. pops up. Mm -hmm. So anything that comes to your awareness is an opportunity for healing. Not to fear from it. Be happy it's coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> so all of our troubles, all of our travails, be happy that you have them so that they can be healed. Correct? Well, you know, again, uh, the gray has many shades. There's many purposes for many experiences of how we are going to use it, utilize it, transform it, or whatever. But here's the thing. We don't have to keep the energy that does not serve our highest good. I don't believe that we need to... I mean, I really worked hard for that damn experience, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I chose that and I worked for it. I need that experience because I'm going to put that in my database. And when I need it for myself or for another fellow human or being, I can take that experience and help that other person or help myself again. But here's 
the freedom. I can release that energy that is blocking me. Everything is energy, right? Mm -hmm. I can release that energy. I can send it back home. And I can bring back, which, what do I do? So people go, okay, you let go of that energy, then what? We must never be empty. Our cup must be always full. So what would do we do? The human soul, the vibration that we increase and heal and transform with is love. Right. So we bring in the love energy. We feel ourselves with love energy, but without talking about an outcome, without guiding it to what it's going to do because it is already intelligent energy. It knows what it's going to do. So our words, what do we use? Words are very important because words are vibration that directs your energy, your thought. So what we say is, I'm calling upon the universal love that I am healing myself with and I am transforming the energy I am releasing the energy that no longer serves my highest good. I thank that energy because that energy taught me. It's not my enemy. It taught me. Mm -hmm. So I'm releasing that energy to its origin. And I'm receiving the love energy to heal, transform effortlessly. Effortlessly. I'm a little lazy, so I love the word effortlessly. <laughs> and how about painlessly, too? <laughs> <laughs> to fit my vibration mm -hmm. for no side effects and discomfort you see so what happens then i have you know you don't want to immediately push the energy okay so what you want to do is you want that energy to be harmonious synchronistically calmly adaptively come into your spirit body and mind there's always a way of doing it. if there's a will there's a way of doing it yeah, you don't want to release the dam, <laughs> right, and be flooded. Exactly. And you, you couldn't handle exactly. it. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I think every holistic practitioner, every healer, every doc must learn about energy. It's very important. Mm -hmm. So um, this individual did that, healed, transformed the, their lives. Now is living, I'm not saying she became a millionaire, but life became a lot easier. Right. We must not, we do the healing. Um, sometimes we know the purpose, sometimes we don't know the purpose. It could come to our attention, but we don't know the purpose at the moment. You know, just accept it, appreciate it, be grateful. It will reveal itself. It will reveal itself. So, past lives. Um, another one, um, that was living an emotion and experience. The second major I want to talk about as a story, Steve, is how it can also physically affect us, the past life. Um, I had an individual that came to me, which had several, um, operations. See, I'm also a medical hypno, uh, hypnotherapist. I work with cancer patients. I work with patients who is dealing with illnesses. That's great. Okay. Um, to understand how they got that illness, why they created that illness, what is it they need to experience with that illness, how to accept it, how to let it go, what they need to do with it, etc. Because we all we have all the answers, and if we need to have at any time of our lives, if we need to have that answer at that moment, we will get it or we will be guided to something else. Okay. So this individual came to me and said, you know, he's been having, he thinks he has cancer, he's not sure, they're not really able to diagnose him, but he's having problems and he's had like three operations with the intestines. So he says, you know, can you please give me a healing? I said, well, let's start with just doing some Reiki, doing some energy healing. And just as I went into it, you know, this is another ready soul, jumped right at it. And I swear to God, Steve, he became so hard. I thought he was dead. Rigid. Catatonic. Yeah. yeah, rigid. Catatonic. Rigid. And I just went, 
oh my god, I'm gonna have to call 911. <laughs> I've killed him. <laughs> You know, because he, very shallow breathing, very, uh, I, I panicked and I went and it was just like, you know, I wasn't sure if I was understanding it was breathing. I took the mirror and I put it to his, you know, his nose and mouth wow. like, okay, you know, that, that's how freaked out I got at that moment. And then I started, I said, okay, did you see, I needed to calm down. And uh, so I took a deep breath and I said, okay, Denise, come back into your healer self. I began my uh, session because I didn't go, I didn't do hypnosis. No. I, I thought I, it, it didn't start with hypnosis. You were just talking. You see, it started talking. See, automatic talking. The soul finds its way. Talking, relaxing him. As I relaxed him, of course, what happens? The mind goes into the theta state. So, and the mind and the body and the spirit is ready for this experience. So, I said, you need to, you know, calm down now, come into your body. And so we started, to cut the story short, we found out that he was a, a, a prince or a noble or somebody very important um, in the mid medieval times. Yeah, and he was murdered brutally murdered, stabbed to death, like Caesar. And I told him, well, okay, show me where your wounds are. Mm. I said, where is the major wound that killed you? The major wound that killed you. So the hand goes right onto the operation mark. Right. <laughs> he was stabbed and brutally killed. And then I said, where were the other ones? So he shows me everywhere in the body. And when I look at the body, those areas were the problematic areas. Interesting. You see? So we did a healing on that, a releasing on that, and whatever. So it's, it's, it's interesting. So we don't have to put a form. I'm a no-form person. I'm studying no-form now. And that's why I studied so many modalities. Mm -hmm. So when a person, a client, individual comes to me, um, I talk and we tell stories to each other. That's nice. They tell me their life story and I tell them stories and what happens is they become like olive oil in water. Whatever that soul needs to work on, the olive oil, you know, you pour water. Floats up to the top. Yeah. Floats up to the top. So whatever at that time that person needs to pay attention to, heal, release, look into, whatever the purpose is, starts coming up. And we are working on the now. Mm -hmm. Whatever you need now is what we need. Another part is people like to connect with their higher selves, their guides, ascended masters, angels, other beings. Um, I think this is another interest that why people like to choose hypnosis. Mm -hmm. Because we also um, are able to channel our parallel lives and our past lives. Um, but we are also able to, when we are in that brain wave, we are also universally able to collect to the go into the collective consciousness and galactic consciousness and that's where we collect from the galactic dna <laughs> nice you know uh, i also studied a, a lot of uh, material from dolores cannon who has her own method of regression therapy mm -hmm. one of the things she mentions is people do get in touch with their higher self Mm -hmm. for the healing aspect especially yes uh, and many times people have an instant healing of mm -hmm. some physical problem or they mm -hmm. they contact like you said the galactic consciousness or past mm -hmm. lives that were not on the earth or mm -hmm. uh, alien beings or whatever it's pretty interesting now that's mm -hmm. why I, i've become so interested in hypnosis in general because it mm -hmm. seems to be the the gateway to all of these wonderful opportunities for Healing one of the and gateways. Knowledge. Yeah. One of the gateways. Yes. One of the gateways. I think, um, to be honest, 
um, whatever work we do, may it be an energy work or a hypnosis work or uh, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, soul retrieval, regression, mm, kinesiology, what happens is when the brain, no matter what you're doing, when the brain goes into the theta mode mm -hmm. and also the delta mode, because when we're sleeping, we're also doing work. Mm -hmm. That's when the physical shuts, because we do the higher work when the body shuts. We can't handle that energy with the physical. Right. So when you go into whatever you're doing, your brain just goes into the theta work. And when you go into the theta, you're able to do whatever you really need to do. See, my, I've tried doing this myself, uh, especially mm -hmm. in the last few months. Self-hypnosis? Well, hypnosis and meditation mostly. But okay. uh, I, what I found is it takes me about 10 minutes to go, mm -hmm. you know, kind of deep. And then mm -hmm. usually I just kind of blank out. I mean, I don't remember what happens. And if I'm listening to a tape or whatever, uh, most of the time I am not, you know, physically conscious at the, you know, the conscious level. So I don't know what's happening. And when I'm dreaming as well, I know I dream because a lot of times I'll wake up in the middle of the night. Now remember some silly thing that I'm dreaming about, but I, mm -hmm. I really can't uh, put a handle on the meaning of it. So uh, there's something there that I have to learn to, in order mm -hmm. to, to, to let's say go out of body or you know get out of my normal everyday consciousness, so I can contact these other realms. So I'm kind of mm -hmm. stuck at the moment, uh, mm -hmm. although I'm really interested. I've got three or four books on OBEs, out of body stuff. I've interviewed uh -huh. uh, some of the top authors, in fact. So maybe you have some suggestions. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I've, I've, I've walked many fun paths. Um, number one, uh, this is why I always tell everybody, you need to learn how energy works, how you can work with the key energy or the chi energy or universal energy. You need to learn to work on controlling your emotions, controlling your energy, okay, and controlling your thoughts. Not in the way where you're obsessive, <laughs> but being able to control and maneuver, okay? So what's happening for you, if you are dozing off, that means you haven't learned how to, um, how to control your energy. Okay, so it's a vibration. You're going from one vibration to another vibration, but your body's not able to keep up with it. Okay? okay, so you have the blackout. So you need to learn how to be in your body, how to keep your high, your vibration high, and how to control it. Once you practice that, you will not get lost. You won't doze off. This at the very beginning happens because you don't know how to. It takes practice. Spirituality, knowing yourself, I say is like sports. The more you dribble the ball, the more basket shoots you're going to do, it's going to get better. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's going to get better. So if you come across a modality to do that, I usually um, advise people to take Aikido. Hmm because you learn how to go with the energy, flow with the energy, and you learn to let go of resistance. Interesting. Um, I recommend, see, everyone's different. You know, I did Aikido and I did Reiki and I did right. bioenergy um, because I'm, you know, into it as a healer. But um, you can do Reiki. Um, you can do um, Tai Chi. You mm. can do Qigong. These are some of the um, energy work that you can do to learn how to control your energy. What happens is, in your case, you are receiving a lot of energy. You are going into that vibration, but you're leaking. <laughs> I'm a leaky kind of guy. <laughs> That's another case. We receive, we receive, we receive, but we have... Um, energetically, sometimes we have auric, our aura is torn. 
okay our energetic field is torn so or the second thing is that when we don't know how to control our energy we become like a cup but that has a hole in it mm. so what's coming is going through we're not able to utilize it we're not able to use it so we need to learn to receive to cleanse to transform to release and replenish it's very important it's very I, important i've recently done a major cleanse so i i think i started the ball rolling in the right direction and that really uh mm -hmm. changed my energy uh, everybody could can tell who knows mm -hmm. me um, yeah. over the past say six months or so uh, so mm -hmm. that's a good start but i like your suggestions i'll follow mm -hmm. up on, on at least one of those well, you know i you. think yeah i think that's the most important thing you, you got to understand energy and then what's funny is see i like to do things and to keep your high vibration and energy what i love the most is and that's when because i kept on saying to her i did this I mean, I've learned I'm a Tao healer, I'm a shaman, I do Reiki, I do kinesiology, I do hypnosis, past life, blah, 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 move on, I have a lot. Laughter but therapy. <laughs> laughter yoga, <laughs> laughter therapy, laughter yoga, mm -hmm. because it's the quickest and the most fun way of raising your vibration. It's amazing. It's amazing. And it's got its physical benefits, too. You're releasing endorphins, you know, the happy hormone. Mm -hmm. And uh, so laughter is, it has many, many benefits to it. It has physical benefits. It has spiritual benefits. It has vibrational frequency benefits. Laughter is a very good source of keeping your energy uh, high level because once it's it's um imagine that you want there is an energy pole that is 10 meters okay but you are standing on another pole that's three meters how you're telling yourself i need to reach the 10 meter pole but if my energy is at three meters there's no way i'm going to reach that so i ask myself what is it that i need so i can come and reach the 10 meter pole. I can't move that 10 meter pole, right, with a three meter pole. I have to raise my vibration to the same level to create a transformation. So whatever we do, may it come medically, may it come spiritually, whatever you need to do, you have to, I believe you have to, and we, Oh, what a blessed world we have. We have all the tools. Spirit, body, mind. Simultaneously. We can not only focus on the body. We can not only focus on the spirit. We can not only focus on the mind. When we work on all three, and that is why I created the Keller Method. I didn't know what to call it because I have so many modalities. It's a cocktail. Yeah. So at the end, I said, well, it's something that I made it mine. So I call it the Keller method. When an individual or a group comes to me, I see what they need and I just reach out and I do it. And the most important thing as a healer, no matter what modality you do, is to, and I think this is one of the most important services that we must gift each other, is helping people to learn how to heal themselves. I can be the guide. I go to healers too. Because sometimes, hey, I'm empty too. I need some light. Mm -hmm. I need some help. Then there's a reason why I go to another person as well. So whatever you need, look into it. There's never one modality. And... Um, so we can all help each, help each other, basically, what you're saying. Exactly. And exactly. we have this wonderful medium of the internet that uh, is so full of information about people like yourself and even a way to reach out and, and talk to them like we're doing right now with the Skype. So uh, that's my intention is to provide as much 
of this sort of healing information as possible so people can become aware of it and know that they should get out of their shell and reach out. And, you know, um, I also, you know, as the um, medical world um, has its approaches that I don't like, there's also the, um, the holistic world approaches and the spiritual approaches that I don't like. I like to keep it real. I like to keep it natural. I don't like it when I see individuals coming to me and saying, I will open your chakras <laughs> and oh, wear close. these special, you know, wear these special gowns, um, you know, have the, the, the props, I call it, or, mm. you know, put my voice soft, you know, for people to understand that I'm a healer and a spiritual person, I need to talk softly and calmly. Come on, people, you know, mm -hmm. just be real <laughs> because spirituality, spirit, body, mind, spirituality experience, we're here to have a spiritual experience in the physical body. Keep it real. Keep it natural. And that's one of the other problems we have. That's why we're not advancing is People, you know, they have all these judgments and misconceptions of what it's about to be, the spiritual growth or the spiritual path or our lives, you know. Spirit and body and life is not separate and it's not something special. We're all born with it. We just all have individual paths and collective paths that we experience whatever we need to experience, okay. I mean, mm -hmm. if I'm able to make a zap with my energy, it's not something special. It's not special. It is what we are. It is who we are. So, you know, and as Jesus said, the only way to reach source, the only direct path to reach source is through being a child. Be as little children. Be as little children. Why? So I always tell people, do not lose the story. Do not lose playfulness. Do not lose the child within you. We're not here to be condemned or to be judged. We are here to experience. But, you know, I'm really tired of the suffering experience in the DNA. <laughs> I don't want, you know, I want to erase the proverb or the saying, you know, no pain, no gain. Hell with that. <laughs> Is that the true color method? <laughs> you know, that's the true color method. I use laughter therapy even in hypnosis. Well, every time I've talked to you, we have laughed a bunch and this is no exception. And really, I, I want to thank you for taking the time to uh, allow this interview to take place. I'm sure it'll benefit a lot of people. So um, I think we've come to uh, a good place to uh, end this, but I know it won't end. It'll go on and on and on because Anytime. that's the way you are. We have many subjects. So it, well, hey, we're <laughs> infinitive. You know, and this year is an infinitive year when we uh, have 2015 add them up, it comes to an eight. So we are unlimited. And, um, you know, as I said, Steve, um, I just think that we need to, my motto is do what you need to do, seek what you need to do for truth and a good experience with a great belly laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of love. <laughs> well, I wanna thank you, Denise Keller, for being with me here today. I know it's really late at night where you are, but it's early in the morning here. But uh, even though we're thousands of miles apart, I definitely feel uplifted and I feel healed. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Anytime, Steve. Talk to you later again. Love you. Bye-bye.